The NFL Honors is a award show that occurs before the Super Bowl. And they announce the finalists for all the awards, MVP, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, all that. And then we get the Coach of the Year. Brian Dable, understandable. He definitely probably should win this award. Sean McDermott with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, okay. Doug Peterson, Jacksonville. Okay. Kyle Shanahan with the 49ers, understood. Nick Sirianni with the Philadelphia Eagles, not going to complain about that. But you know who is missing from this list? Hmm. Let's see. What team was projected to have the number one overall pick after they traded their longtime franchise star quarterback to the Denver Broncos? What team had a over-under win total of five and a half going into this season and ended up making it to the playoffs oh it's the seattle seahawks p carroll should be a finalist for this award and not only should p carroll be a finalist award a finalist for this award but he probably should win it or split it with brian dable nobody expected the New York Giants and the Seattle Seahawks to have the success that they did. These were two of the best stories in the NFL. The New York Giants were pretty much working with scrap pieces. Brian Dable, he went to the New York Giants. He was inherited a team that wasn't all that talented, but he was able to make the most of it. Good example of why coaching in the NFL matters. Many people just overlook coaching and they just pay attention to who has who at quarterback and who has the most talented rosters. And that's why a lot of people get their preseason record predictions wrong. My preseason record prediction for the New York Giants, I think I had them at seven wins, but I had them at 10 wins if Dayon Jones played at a serviceable level and he did. Brian Dable should win the award along with Pete Carroll because the same thing can be said about Pete Carroll. Hell, many people expected Seattle to possibly be worse. We was thinking that this was going to be Pete Carroll's last hurrah. We were thinking that Pete Carroll might retire or he might get fired. Nobody believed in Geno Smith. Be honest, you wrote off Geno Smith. You were just like me before the season, making jokes about their quarterback situation. Drew Locke and Geno Smith. Who would have thought that Geno Smith would have been a pro bowler? Pete Carroll is not only just running a rehabilitation facility over there at Seattle, but he also is doing a good job of developing the young players that they draft. The Seattle Seahawks had the best draft class of any team last year. All their rookies have produced at a really high level, they had two phenomenal rookie tackles. Even though their play kind of dwindled down the stretch, they still played really well. Tariq Woolen, Kobe Bryant, a phenomenal rookie cornerback tandem. And I'm pretty sure there's some other rookies that they have on defense that I can't think of. Boye Mafe, a pass rusher that they have. He was really good. We can't forget about K-9. He probably should end up winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. Pete Carroll did a fantastic job, and it's really surprising that he was left off the list of being the finalist for Coach of the Year when, in all honesty, he should probably be winning this award with Brian Dable. They can split it. They split the awards in the past. They've had, like, a co-MVP. I don't see no reason why they can't have a co-coach of the year, Brian Dable and Pete Carroll. Nobody expected these two teams to even make it to the postseason, let alone even have more than four or five wins. If you would have told me back in August that Seattle was going to make it to the playoffs, even as a seven seed, I would have laughed. I would have laughed at you and I would have been so bold and cocky that I would have told you, put some money on it. I would have been maybe confident enough to tell you to put $500 on it or a really large amount. That's how much I didn't believe that Seattle was going to have the season that they had. Pete Carroll 
showed everybody why he's still one of the best coaches in the league. And for a very long time, the narrative about Pete Carroll has kind of been, well, if it wasn't for Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll wouldn't still have a job. Hmm. Pete Carroll, who would you replace? Who would you put on this list? Or who would you replace for Pete Carroll on this list? I'll give you an easy answer. Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott should not be on this list. The Buffalo Bills did not exceed expectations. The coaches who should be finalists for coach of the year should be the coaches who exceeded expectations. Not coaches who met expectations. We expected Buffalo to be as good as what they were during the regular season. And even though these awards aren't determined by postseason success, these awards are determined by regular season performance. I'm not including the Buffalo Bills losing to Cincinnati in the postseason. I'm just talking about during the regular season, they didn't do anything that we didn't expect. Will JT, we lost Von Miller. Okay, and you telling me that losing Von Miller and having the season that you did was more impressive than what Pete Carroll and Brian Dable did? Stop it. You're you're being biased if you're saying that. Just stop the be stop the bias. Stop the bias. Stop it. Okay. You know and I know that Pete Carroll and Brian Dable should both be finalists for this award. The coach of the year should be awarded to the coach who exceeds expectations. And these two coaches exceeded expectations and then some. They were doing, I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to say that, but they were doing some really good work. Pete Carroll is able to, to rehabilitate guys' careers. It's kind of similar to what Bill Belichick did or used to be able to do a couple of years back. He used to take these old guys off the street who it looked like their careers were done, and he was able to squeeze some juice out of them. It was kind of a little bit nostalgic when they first signed Malcolm Butler. I was hoping that it would work. Sad that it didn't, but Doug Peterson... You also can make an argument for him. Okay, he did a he did a really good job as well. Nobody was really expecting too much from Jacksonville other than me. And everybody laughed when I said that the Jaguars are going to win the AFC, the AFC South. Nick Sariani, Kyle Shanahan, you have to put those guys on here. Because even though Kyle Shanahan, you can say, well, JT, you're saying that Sean McDermott didn't really exceed expectations. He met expectations. Kyle Shanahan did the same thing. Yeah, but at the same time, he did this with a rookie quarterback for the majority of the season and two other quarterbacks as well. Not to mention the 49ers had other injuries that they had to deal with also during the season. So that whole argument for keeping Sean McDermott on this list, no, he should not be on this list. He should not be a finalist for this award. Kyle Shanahan still was able to exceed expectations because once Jimmy Garoppolo went down, most people were asking, are the 49ers Super Bowl hopes done? And let's be honest, you didn't think that they would be able to get this far with a un, with a almost undrafted quarterback? Brock Purdy was Mr. Relevant. He was the last pick of the draft. So for the 49ers, the success they had was really unexpected during the regular season for them to be as good as what they were with the seventh round Mr. Relevant, now Mr. Relevant, Brock Purdy. Nick Sariani, the Eagles, let's be honest, people expected them to be as good as what they were, but not everybody. It was kind of a split. It was kind of a split majority. There were some people who were still on the fence about if Jalen Hurts would take that next step as a passer. There were some people like me who still had some reservations about Nick Sariani. So I don't think that everybody expected Philly to be as good as what they have been. Nick Sariani, you probably can say that he exceeded expectations also. And they probably are the one of the biggest stories in the league because they are the most talented team in the league top to bottom they have one of the best pass rushes in the history of the game they have 70 sacks on the year that's top five all time for total sacks in the season by a team top five or top three can't remember that statistic off the top of my head 